Hello all, hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Today I will be showing you how I painted this Agapanthus in watercolour. This is a great piece for beginner or intermediate watercolour painters. The techniques I will show you are a great way of getting a really atmospheric and impressionistic feel to your watercolour paintings. This will introduce a few techniques that you may have not used before, such as applying masking fluid to retain the whites of your watercolour paper, and also the use of salt crystals and alcohol for great effects. Okay, enough talking, let's get straight into it. To make things super easy for you all, I have provided a sketch of the Agapanthus I used to get the original flower outline on my watercolour paper. To access this drawing, just use the link in the video description, which will take you to the Google Docs, where you will be able to download the image. Just print and resize the image as required. Now you will need to transfer this image to your chosen watercolour paper. You can either do this freehand or by using a grid enlargement technique or my preferred method of directly tracing on a piece of glass with a background light source. See my earlier watercolour dragonfly video that shows this technique in detail. You can either choose a horizontal or vertical aspect to the painting like I have done here. Now we will use the masking fluid to protect the white parts of the paper that we do not want to colour with our background paint. This is the brand of masking fluid I'm using. Remember to use an old brush as the masking fluid is hard to remove from brushes. Once you have applied the masking fluid to all parts of the flower, let it dry thoroughly for around half an hour. It will feel rubbery, but dry at this stage, and that is what we want. The reason we don't simply paint around the flower is that this is extremely difficult and time consuming. Also, it does not matter how careful you are, you will still see the brush strokes around the whites you are trying to save and this will look manufactured and un unnatural. Now I will paint the background of the painting and I have chosen these four colours. I always start by thoroughly wetting the whole paper quite liberally and you can see here how the masking fluid is not allowing these masked sections to become wet or absorb the watercolour. I like to use a large mop style brush for this. I will now add the salt crystals for a different effect. The salt has the effect of attracting or concentrating the pigment under the crystals to give a really nice stippled effect. Now it is time to add the isopropyl alcohol, which you can get from your chemist. I use a fan brush to sprinkle on the alcohol and this has the opposite effect to the salt in that it repels the water and the pigment to give a nice circular patterns. At this stage I thought the painting lacked some true colour and looked a little washed out so I made up some more concentrated batches of the same background colour and use the fan brush to splatter these around. I was cautious of making the painting darker towards the bottom and not at the top. This is what the painting should look like after it has thoroughly dried and you have removed all the salt crystals.
To remove the masking fluid, gently rub the surface with your finger and it should start to come away from the paper in a similar fashion to dried PVA glue. Some type of watercolour paper do not allow for easy removal of the masking fluid and can even tear, so be extremely careful. From past experience, I have found that the rougher textured or cheaper watercolour papers prove the most difficult, and I also remove the masking as soon as possible. For instance, I would never leave it on overnight. Now for the painting of the main flower. I decided to use a method I had used previously which seemed to give a really nice atmospheric and impressionist result. That was to use dry watercolour pencils. This gives a rather grainy type feel to the drawing and contrasts really well with the background wash. I made sure that I had the reference photo close by and made con constant reference to this while drawing. I have a set of 72 Dermot watercolour pencils which have a great range in colour. I first started with the green parts of the flower including the bud and the stem etc. Enjoy a little bit of music and I'll be back shortly. I am now drawing the petals of the flower and incorporated some dark blues and lilacs for the shading etc.
In this part of the video, which I have sped up, I'm adding some dark highlights and borders. I'm doing this with some black ink markers that have various tip sizes and also some dark colored markers. Here I am doing the opposite of the previous step in that I'm adding some bright highlights. I'm using some white acrylic paint to do this with a very fine tipped brush. Here is the finished result. I'm happy with this painting and think that it has a really nice soft impressionistic feel. Be sure to leave a comment or to give a thumbs up if you like this video and please subscribe so you can get notified of my future videos. Have a great day and bye for now.